Miami Chug, new t-shirt design from oldanglandshop.com. Welcome. It's pretty sick. What's up everyone and welcome to Sunday with Ola 120. Welcome! Some of you guys might have already heard that song because that's the song that I wrote on the past past uh, live stream that I have from this room. And that's a new thing now where I try and write the swallows during a live stream the week before. So did you watch the latest live stream? No? Well, it happens on Thursdays now. Okay, until I change my mind that it's probably better on a Wednesday or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, Sunday with all the riff challenge. You can download the drums from this riff and song in the description of this video. You can be a part of the Sunday with all the riff challenge. On Mondays, I check out the contributions on uh, a live stream. Okay, awesome, dude. Oh shit, I forgot the. <sighs> It'll crawl there. It'll crawl. Oh shit, that gave me hiccups. I have to be really, really careful about the uh, yelling too hard. Why does it never save my setup? The f is wrong with Mr. Edel Crony? F Carino, f oh no, no! Don't say those words, Ola. That's gonna demonetize the video. All right, I want to start on a really positive note because this past week I discovered that my YouTube channel has exceeded 200 million views. What? <laughs> Applause. Why the hell are you guys watching me? <laughs> Why are you guys watching me? Man, 200 million views? I guess like a hundred of those are from my mom. You know, but uh, you know, a hundred million views at least? Holy shit. No, obviously this is, this is a great milestone. And you know, I started my channel in 2008. So from 2008 to 2020, I got a hundred million views, you know, throughout those years. But the next hundred million views was between 2020 and 2023. So a big chunk of the views are now from the past three years. Holy shit, guys. Thank you so much for this. I can't express my gratitude enough for you guys. Thank you so much for staying with me throughout all these years. I mean, 10 years ago, that was me 10 years younger. And you know, a lot of people that watched back then, they're 10 years older. I mean, so much shit have, must have happened in 10 years. Why are you still watching? I, obviously there's new viewers as well. Uh, I, I, I hope, uh, feel lucky if I get to have you for another 10 years, you know? How about that? Thank you so much guys for making this happen. You guys helped me too, okay? Thank you so much. I'm ready to head straight into the news, let's go. All right, everyone has been talking about a Margot Robbie. Is it Margot? Morgoth? No, Morgoth is an Elden Ring. That's the boss right there. This is Margot. 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 Is it Margot? Mor- whatever. It's this lady uh, in this picture. <laughs> a lot of people have been praising her because she stood up for Heavy Mel and Slipknot. And we're gonna watch this segment. Uh, and I listen to like only heavy metal music and I would dye my hair black and only cut it with a razor blade. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Cape Blanchett right there. Does anyone like heavy metal music? Was that, a, was that something you genuinely liked? I genuinely... Does anyone like heavy metal music? I didn't, I didn't realize Kate was a moron, but okay, let's go. <laughs> something you genuinely like? I genuinely, and I still genuinely like it. Really? Yeah. Do you like Good. monster trucks and things like that? No. <laughs> no. Oh my God, what a terrible person. <laughs> so what I'm taking away with me 
uh, after watching this uh, very vague clip is that uh, Margot Robbie went to a Slipknot show and that I don't like Kate Blanchett anymore. I didn't like her before either, but that was just very ignorant questions right there. Are you into monster trucks? Come on, man. Korn announces Follow the Leader 25th Anniversary Makeup Set. Follow the Leader actually means a lot to me as the, you know, teenage Ola. Uh, when was it released? 1997, I think. Uh, how, how old was Ola? I think Ola was 16 years old. And, uh, you know, one of those moments when, you know, you, you buy the album on release day, you go to the store, you get the album, and you listen to it over and over again on your stereo. I just, I remember this moment. You know, when I noticed that, oh shit, the first 12 tracks just skipped. And then the first song started at the 13th track or something. It's like, okay, that's a little bit weird. But dude, the production on this album here, you know, going from the previous two albums, it just made me so happy. It's just... Bruh, you know. No? You don't know? Okay. And that was 25 years ago. That, if anything, makes me feel old. And I probably need a little bit of makeup to, <laughs> you know, to fix my face. Seeing that, you know, I'm old now and people that are old need to fix their face a little bit. So great that they're releasing uh, makeup for guys like me. I guess this is just another way of making a little bit more revenue from, uh, you know, an already dying industry of music. <laughs> okay, Dean Zielinski. Dean Zielinski who formed Dean Guitars, later sold it to Armadillo. You know, the, the guy, Dean Zielinski, the guy that was friends with Dimebag and, you know, Dimebag played Dean and all that. The original Dean guy. Okay, Dean Zielinski. Uh, he's been in talks with Rita uh, about doing the dime guitars for a, for a while now. And it's been taking a lot of time. I think uh, it's been taking a lot of time because Rita and uh, Dimebag Estate sued Dean Guitars or Armadillo Express about uh, the rights to the shapes of Dimebag Guitars. So uh, that whole lawsuit and all uh, has been going on for a while and I think that they didn't want to do anything before that was settled which is smart because I mean you don't want to start making ML guitars or Razorbacks or uh, you know the stealth shape uh, before all of that is settled. In short Dimebag Estate and Rita sued Dean Guitars, uh, Armadillo Express because they uh, trademarked the shapes. I've actually read the court case and it seems like the Dimebag Estate is not getting the uh, the shapes back. And I think that the Dime Estate appealed, is that what it's called? Appeal when they, they don't accept the court ruling, so they, I don't think it's over just yet. Anyways, Dean Zielinski, he posted this picture uh, saying, uh, he says working on it. So, apparently working on something Dimebag related, because he's sitting here with a Razorback. This is the Rust Razorback. I think that was like one of the first uh, Dean Razorbacks that came out uh, after Dimebag's passing. I'm really going into detective mode, because look at this. Right here, there's dollars. And it says one five dollars. Maybe he's counting costs or something. Maybe he's trying to map up like prices and what something would cost or like, you know. You never know, man. So, you know, I just saw that there, that there's a bunch of uh, dollar signs right there. So he's probably like counting on things like maybe counting specs. Like, okay, oh, you know, this will cost this and this and this and this. But then also there's a very beautiful parrot. And behind that parrot is an ML guitar. I'm not sure if that's a new one or an old one. That's probably an old one. What does this picture say? I think that this picture is saying that Dean is working on it. I'm not sure if it's going to be a Razorback shaped guitar because I don't think they can. I don't think it's going to be an ML shaped guitar because I don't think they can do that either. So what are they going to make? Uh, you know, are, what, what type of shape are they going to do? Uh, I read in the court case that uh, Dimebag did other shapes as well uh, that hasn't been seen before. So we might see something completely new coming from Dime Guitars. Stay tuned, man. Holy shit. I'm excited. This could be really exciting. Mark Tremonti of Alter... Why is this in the way for that camera? There it is. Can you see my face now? Hello. Uh, Mark Tremonti of Alter Bridge is sure that Creed Reunion will happen at some point. He says, there's always talks, people running ideas back and forth, but we don't know as of yet because we're so in deep with this Alter Bridge record that it's tough to kind of get sidetracked right now. He continued, I'm sure... I'm sure something will happen at some point. Creed was such a popular band back in the day, it would be a shame to not do something with it. That has me wondering, what is Scott Stapp 
doing these days. Ok, singer Scott Stapp has since toured and recorded as a solo artist, although he suffered a drug related mellow breakdown in 2014 and spent several years recovering from that. Oh, I remember when this happened, that was terrible. He's probably out there like, can you take me higher? No, but this is absolutely great news for Creed fans that they're keeping a door open. It will probably happen at some point. When? We have no idea. I'm favoring Alter Bridge a lot more, to be honest, than, than Creed, but it's cool anyways, ok? Godsmack drummer isn't sure Metallica's new single will be as popular if it wasn't them. Shannon Larkin said, In the real world, Metallica are the rightful heirs of the, uh, to the number one slide in hard rock. Said Larkin, They deserve to be number one. I listened to the song. I was like, Wow, it's kind of an earworm. I get it. And it sounds like Motorhead. James Hatfield. <laughs> Hat uh, sang pretty high in that course. I was like, wow, I think it sounds fantastic. I heard it on the radio. I was like, wow. Does that did that make any sense? And then he says, if that was some new band with the song Lux Eterna, here they are, Soda Can, whatever the band is, and this is their new song Lux Eterna, that shit wouldn't be number two. It might not even make the top 40. Who knows? But since it's Metallica, they can do that at at radio and put out a song that sounds like Motorhead, basically double bass and all that. That's some 80s shit. Uh, they can do it because they rule the 80s. So it sounds like the drummer is a slight, slight bit salty because uh, Metallica stole their, uh, you know, the, the list at number one. But in reality, he raises and pulls a pretty good question. What if this was a Metallica that released Lux Eterna? Would it have been as successful? Probably not. When they reach to a certain point of success, it doesn't really matter that much what they release. They will still, you know, get the radio time, they will get their air time, they will do the tours, they'll do like all the promotion is basically the same. I mean, it wouldn't get the same traction as if like Devin Townsend would release the song, for instance. Uh, maybe that's a bad example, but you, you know what I'm saying. You know, at some point, it doesn't really matter what the artist is releasing. As long as they release, they keep the ball rolling. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will listen to him. Of course, Lux Eterna will head up straight into the top of the radio hit list. You know, that's just how it is. Metallica has fi- This is not a new recorded segment, by the way. You know, I, I, I didn't record my Swole on this past Wednesday, and now it's Friday because Metallica released a song yesterday. But I'm wearing the same clothes. It's in the same Swole. Just cut me some slack. Metallica dropped a new song, Screaming Suicide. Quoting Metallica, Screaming Suicide addresses the taboo word of suicide, says James Hatfield. The intention is to communicate about the darkness we feel inside. It's ridiculous to think we should deny that we have these thoughts. At one point or another, I believe most people have thought about it. To face it is to speak the unspoken. If it's a human experience, we should be able to talk about it. You are not alone. So a very good message from Metallica in terms of the lyrics. The song is okay. I think I much more preferred Lux Eterna. It's kind of rock and roll, like radio rock with a metal production. I think that's a good way of concluding this new song. I think I like Lux Eterna better. Steve Ice stolen Swiss cheese guitar found an attic in Tijuana, Mexico. So apparently, this guitar, the Swiss cheese, was stolen 36 and a half years ago somewhere. This guitar, along with three others, was stolen in Pasadena, uh, California at Perkins Palace during rehearsals for the Eat, M and Smile tour. It is officially the first guitar to receive a monkey grip handle and the first one Joe made with a handle at my request. Uh, the, the designer, Joe Despagni. I think it's great that the guitar is back. My initial question when seeing this was though, why would you like to steal this guitar? Look at that. I, oh, I'm sorry. That's a horrible looking guitar. I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm gonna say it. That's a horrible looking guitar with uh, a monkey grip on it. Cool though. Speaking about cheese, I think you're gonna like my adventures with Ola this week. That was the news, everyone. Thank you. All right, I know no one asked for it. Well, let's do a rat update. All right, so after my last adventures with Ola, where I was chasing down the rat, I got a lot of tips on uh, different type of baits that rats like, and uh, one of them being chocolate and peanut butter. So I set up the trap again and put it uh, next to the wall and with the camera, and look at this asshole. He takes the bait and he doesn't give a shit about the trap. The trap doesn't set. 
<laughs> How the hell? So I've set the trap again with chocolate, but this time I taped the chocolate to the cage. So the rat has to work more and push a little bit more to get the piece of chocolate. So hopefully that will set the trap off so we can catch this son of a bitch. It feels like he's smarter than me. That's not okay. All right, I just saw on the camera, we got him. Look at that asshole. Damn, he's big. Look at that. Holy shit. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Don't lift that up. I'm taking some gloves so I can pick up the, the cage and I'm gonna put it in this plastic box. Okay. Ha! All right, shit. Chaos. Absolute chaos and mayhem. Obviously, the dog is very excited, but nay, thanks. You, you stay here. All right. I'm sorry, little man. We're gonna release you out in the forest. We must have walked in the school. Get him out there. Where do we go with the, with the rat? <laughs> I guess we have to go to the woods somewhere. Yeah. So we're gonna drive this rat somewhere far, far away. Uh, where is far, far away? Where can we release a rat? I'm gonna see him up. All right. We're out in the middle of the woods right now. I'm gonna let oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Look at him climb, man. Holy shit. Okay, I, I am okay because I have gloves on, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to touch this more than necessary. Ah. So I'm just gonna gently, uh, turn, like do this. Okay, like that. And now, okay, here we go. Get it off, follow me. So. Come here, Rot this. We didn't have to kill the rat. That makes me happy, actually. Okay. Oh. All right. Adventures with Ola, a happy ending. No? Or maybe he gets uh, killed by a fox or something. I have no idea. <laughs> we'll just have to see. But I think this is just a better way of getting rid of the rat. And also teaching my son, who's holding the camera, that you don't necessarily have to kill, you know, pests. <laughs> I knew <laughs> that. You knew that, okay, good. Chug is now back in the forest where he belongs. Uh, hopefully he'll survive this winter. And uh, that, my friends, was Adventure with Paula. Very exciting. What? There it is, hello. How exciting. And I'm so happy that I was able to, you know, conclude the business with the rat. Uh, seeing how last week's adventure with Ola was, uh, you know, I didn't catch the rat, but then it happened. I still have the trap out uh, in case there was more than one rat, but I think this was the guy. This was Chug. Uh, if there's another one, it has to be Chug too, I guess. And everyone lived happily ever after, including the rat that got eaten by a fox. <laughs> Album tip of the week. Hello, let's go. Remember when I said that Nurgle of Behemoth and I were old farts? Because we liked the, the old ways and the old sounds where th things sound organic and nice. I have an excellent album tip. The new obituary album, Dying of Everything. It brings me back to the 90s, man. Listen to this. This right here sounds like 90s. And I just... Freaking love it. I've been listening to this album since the release and uh, it's just It warms my little Swedish black heart to listen to stuff like that. This is completely up my alley I know maybe you guys think that oh this sounds old That's the point, you know, it sounds Sounds old. That's what I like about it I'm definitely seeing a trend where we're going backwards a little bit in terms of the uh, you know the production of uh, metal music. We had this time where everything was just absolutely peaking, maximized, you know, everything's just like a friggin' uh, brick wall. I'm seeing a trend where we're going back a little bit, and I like this trend. That's a good trend, okay? Dying of everything, obituary. Check it out. Question of the day, the section where I answer a question from one of my YouTube members. Today's question is from Nick O. Lass. 
Bonjour, hola, oui, oui, baguette, um, comment ça va, mon ami? Uh, can you give us a look in the description of what's on your cart? S'il vous plaît, monsieur, croissant, au revoir. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Let's head into the other room. This is your seat. Hop up. All right. All right, so now we're in the real office where the real stuff is happening. It's me and Pix and we're gonna show you what I have on my cart. Now, people that have followed me for a good while, they know the history about the cart. This is my drink cart that I bought. Uh, you know, classic French style uh, where you can make the cart bigger like this uh, by using the flaps. Obviously, when you have a drink cart, you also need to have booze on it. So what is important to have on a drink cart that's in your office? After a long day of reading snarky comments on YouTube, you just have to get some whiskey in you. This is a single malt from Sweden. It's called High Coast. And that's also what I keep in this beautiful thing right here. Mmm, smoky, baby. Can't really go wrong with whiskey. Another thing that you have to have on your drink cart is a cognac. And this is a classic, the Hennessy. And you're drinking out of these, and look at these obnoxiously big glasses. Only in the president's office, Old England president of uh, United Swede of America. Now, for the ladies, I have Bailey's. Oh, it's also for guys. I also drink Bailey's. It's a little sweeter. You need a sweeter option. Bailey's is where it's at. If you feel like you're in a good party mode on a Friday, you know, this little baby, the Bailey's can help you out. So those are my three choices right there for, you know, a regular alcoholic <laughs> day. A good single malt whiskey, a good cognac and Bailey's. And then last but not least, I have this bottle of rum that I haven't even opened yet, but it was gifted to me. It's Pampero Anniversario. It's from Venezuela. And uh, what's the percentage? 40%. I'm not much of a rum fan, but you know, I, I can have a little sip of rum here and there. And I, no, I'm not gonna drink on camera because that will definitely demonetize this video. You have to be careful nowadays, man. Also, as a disclaimer, I don't really drink at all, like ever. This is basically just for show. I think uh, this right here, that's me and uh, a bunch of guests that have been drinking this. I think I used this cart once in 2022. And uh, then it, but, but it looks good and it rolls around. It's very important to have a cart with you at all times. I think the ultimate thing would be for you to grab a random pet. Uh, we didn't keep the rat, by the way, so I can't, can't keep the rat. But you grab a random pet like this and you sit like this. And you sit there behind the desk with a little cognac and sit there like... <laughs> Oh, okay. Should I maybe block someone today on YouTube? Maybe. <laughs> it's good villain material right there. Thank you so much, Nicholas. My friends, that was it for Sunday with Ola 120. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed the rat story. Again, I want to thank you all for the incredible support you're giving me. You're making my job very easy. And if you like this video, you can like, you can subscribe, you can buy a t-shirt from olanglandshop.com. You can buy music from olanglandshop.com too. Also, yes, I forgot to say, but Coffee with Ola, you know, the video series where I interview people is up on Spotify now, available as a podcast. I'll put a link up there, up here, down there, in my ass, in your ass. Let's go. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great Sunday. Goodbye. If you want, you can read up on a lot of these. Oh, why is it going so hard for me today? Oh! Hello, I'm Old England. <laughs>